Hello, in this video I am going to explain how to implement the kinematic control to follow trajectories using Serial Robot Manipulator in CopilaSim and the Sim AK plugin. The aims of this presentation are the implementation of a kinematic controller so that the end effector of the robot follows a given trajectory. To do this, we first review some theoretical concepts associated with uh, the robot kinematic control. Later, we will see how to create a trajectory from a path, which will allow us to obtain the position and orientation of a reference frame to follow. Then, we will see some auxiliary functions for calculating the error between the reference orientation and the end effector orientation. We will also briefly review some functions and variables that we need in order to compute the forward kinematics and differential kinematics using the SIMAK plugin. Finally, we will see how to implement the kinematic controller once all previous steps have been completed and show a demo. For a couple of examples. As a review, to implement a kinematic control, we must compute several terms that require calculations that we have been uh, studying and uh, mentioning them in several previous videos. We need to implement a trajectory generator, uh, and in this case, I'm going to use a copilis in path and get a path point at each time instant. This generator will return a position and orientation or a reference position and orientation as well as their velocities. We will compute the error between the reference position and orientation and the end effector position and orientation obtained from the forward kinematic function. This error will be multiplied by a gain and added to a feed forward term to compute the end effector speed. This speed will be translated into joint command speeds using the pseudo inverse of the robot Jacobian. Finally, the integration over time of joint velocities will allow us to compute joint positions that will be applied in the end to the robot. In order to implement kinematic control, we need a reference to follow. Here, I propose to create a path using the utilities offered by Copelesim. In the Add menu, then you, you can select Path and then choose a path by, for example, a closed path. Once the path has been created, we must properly position it so that all its points are reachable by the robot. Here, I have checked the options X, axis, points down, or points, uh, down the path and the X axis points up the path parameter dialog. Uh, sorry, x axis points along the path. Okay? Obviously, the path checkpoints can be modified if so wish. Inside the syscall init function, we will create a dummy that will represent the target to follow. And that this dummy will be positioned at the point of the trajectory. To obtain a position of the path, we must make use of a set of Copilacin API functions that will allow us to obtain a table with all positions and orientations of the path, as well as the, its, par its partial length. The variables velocity and pose, uh, pause along path will allow us to determine which point of the path we want to evaluate and the speed of the point along the path. I have created an auxiliary function that will allow us to obtain a posture from the trajectory. The function obtains an interpolated position and orientation of the path according to the value of post along path variable, which must be always defined between 0 and 1. Then it sets the pose of the target dummy object according to the obtained position and orientation and builds the vector of positions and orientations for, uh, to, be, to be used as a, as a reference that will be actually our return output argument. This is a vector with seven elements, three corresponding to the position and four uh, corresponding to the orientation expressed in quaternions. On the other hand, it also obtains the linear and angular velocities of the target dummy by calling the function getObjectBell. This is a function that I'm going to explain right now. 
this function returns a vector with the linear and angular uh, uh, velocities. Actually, it returns uh, the variation of the Euler angle velocities over time for a given uh, object handle. This function is useful for computing the feed forward term of the kinematic controller. It obtains the linear velocity, linear vel, and the angular velocity, angvel. Specifically, the angular velocity is defined with respect to the rotation axis of the object. And by means of a simple transport, uh, transformation, we can obtain the velocity of the Euler angles. The code I'm showing here combines in a vector of six elements, three of them corresponding to the linear speed and three of them corresponding to the uh, speed of Euler angles. And this is what it returns. On the other hand, to compute an error, we must subtract two signals, one with position and orientation references and another one with position and orientations of the end effector. Subtracting positions is not a problem because they are defined in R3, but subtracting orientation is tricky due to Euler discontinuities. In this sense, the correct way to compute a 3D angular difference is by using quaternions. The difference between quaternions is a well-known operation that it is obtained from the multiplication of the first quaternion with the conjugate of the second quaternion. The result of this operation represents a vector in an angle that we must rotate to reach Q2 from Q1. To express the orientation error between the reference and the end effector back in Euler angles, we must use the previous function and then convert the result into Euler angles. For this purpose, I have also implemented another auxiliary function, quad to eul function, which returns a vector with the Euler angles from a given quaternion. Here, I have assumed that the Euler angles uh, I use are the x, y, z representation used in Copelisim. Actually, they are Tate Ryan angles. If beta angle is close to half pi, then the lo a log, symbol, uh, log gimbal uh, situation occurs, uh, which implies that the alpha and gamma angles can be combined and they represent a single uh, rotation because they are uh, basically pointing to the same axis. Um, here I just simply assume that in this case uh, alpha is zero and the actual rotation is returned as a computation of the angle gamma. In order to compute forward kinematics and differential kinematics, we must properly configure the Copelis sim sim. This is something that we have already seen in previous videos using the SimAKI plugin. Here, I will simply review the name of the variables that I have defined as a result of each of the stages that we need to complete before continuing. Before, uh, sorry, for example, variable IKM contains the handle of the IK environment, while variables IK base, IK tip, and IK target are the handles of the IK dummies that we need to define the base, the tip, and the target of the kinematic problem. The variable IK joins contains a table with handles of IK joins, which are generated from a table of regular join handles stored in the variable joins. The variable IK group and dumped define a task of type pose, and this is something we need in order to compute the forward and specifically differential kinematics. Also, we have implemented, or I assume that we have implemented, a set of functions like IKDH, which allows to compute the inverse kinematics, uh, sorry, forward kinematics, while the function getAN allows to compute, uh, in this case, the, um, the end effector transformation. Also, the function getJacob will allow us to compute the uh, differential kinematics. All these functions were described in a previous video. The kinematic controller requires to compute the pseudo-inverse of the Jacobian matrix. In the code I show here, I include an auxiliary code to compute such matrix. I explain a similar code when introducing the matrix library, but here I made small modifications to make computations less sensitive to the tolerance parameter. In return, it computes the regularist method uh, several, or it, it, it needs several iterations to automatically adjust the value of the regularization parameter 
uh, in this case it's lambda, uh, in, the, in the code of, uh, you can see on the right, in the new version. So you can try both of them and you can choose whatever you prefer, the oldest version which is slightly faster or the new version which is, uh, let's say, less sensitive to the tolerance parameter but slightly slower. Now we are ready to, or we have uh, all necessary elements to implement a kinematic controller. The code I show here must be implemented inside the syscall actuation function since in each step of the simulation we call the getPathPose function that will return a different posture to follow depending on the simulation time. From the position and orientation of the end effector we obtain an error or a vector between the reference and the end effector. This error will be calculated using the quadtif function to uh, compute the angular difference in 3D using the quaternion representation. If you try to do this directly with Euler angles, you will face some discontinuity problems. Once the error has been calculated, we must compute the robot Jacobian and obtain a submatrix corresponding to the task. In this sense, the variable task dim takes the value 6 for posture task, uh, tracking tasks, but also it could take the value 5 or 3 if we want to solve a kinematic problem but with fewer constraints. At the end of the code, it computes the speed of joints and increments the position or its position accordingly. The computed position must be updated in joints position um, scene objects but also in the objects uh, created in the sim AK join uh, or plugin, so that all computations forwarding and differential kinematics are uh, consistent. It is important to know that K is the gain of the controller and this can be a scalar that affects to all tasks in the same way but it could be also some uh, diagonal matrix. In my case I usually use values around 0.5 but the higher gain could also have been used and in that case would imply uh, a, conver a faster convergence to the trajectory. Here I show two demonstrative examples of how the kinematic control works. Using a robot with uh, 7 degrees of freedom. The goal of the first video is to track a posture or pose in which both the position and orientation of the end effector must follow a specific reference. In the second video I show an example for position tracking with free orientation. Ok, so let's see the first video. Well, as you can see, the controller takes the error to zero, bringing the tip to the end of the end effector closer to the trajectory, and as we can see, the orientation of the end effector adapts the orientation of the trajectory, which changes the angle gamma because I remember that I checked the option where the x-axis follows the path. Well, in this second example we see uh, how the end effector approaches the trajectory but its orientation is totally free. In this case we would have more degrees of freedom to find a solution for the kinematic problem which will allow us, for example, for, uh, to implement um, policies in the neural space of the task. Well, in this video I have explained how to implement the kinematic control with a serial robot manipulator in Copilesim. Thank you very much.